So if this works like I hope it does, then this could end up saving me hours of work in the spring and every spring to come. I didn't want to do any video and figure I might tear up my lawn even worse doing that. Okay, so yeah, uh, exercise caution. We want to be pretty careful. I got a little too aggressive. All right. Hey, welcome back to Good Works Tractors. We got a different tractor in here today. We're going to be using Jeff from JU Fab Works Kubota B2601. He just recently got this. I want to show you a couple things about this one. I'm going to do a little work with it. I had an idea. I think I had an epiphany on something that can save you guys maybe hours of work depending on how much you have in the spring, but something we're gonna to get to a little bit later with this tractor right here, so stick around. As always, we are proud to be sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. If you're looking for a stability solution for your tractor, then Bora can help. These tractors are typically pretty narrow left to right, pretty long, higher center of gravity, so they're easy to tip or feel uncomfortable on there. Widening your footprint with Bora Wheel Spacers can make a big difference. They're made in America, lifetime warranty. Get more information at their link down below. Now, before we get to our loader work, we're gonna get this thing set up to be successful, get a lot of weight on the back end. We're gonna check these tires. I know these are loaded, but you guys might not know if you're buying a used tractor, if the tires are loaded or not. So there's an easy way to find out. I'll show you that now. Then we'll add on our Versa bracket. Now this is version 2.0. It's gonna have tube steel down below instead of angle iron, just improving all the time. That's what we're trying to do. Oh yeah, and we're gonna repurpose this receiver right here, we have another spot from JU Fabworks. They have a new Kubota bucket bracket. We're gonna tell you more about that in just a second. All right, so you can see right here, it says rim guard. So we know that these tires are loaded with rim guard or kind of a beet juice byproduct that's inside here. Not corrosive at all. It's not gonna freeze. Um, it does smell. So <laughs> you're gonna see some of this come out. It looks kind of like soy sauce. It smells horrible. Um, you don't wanna get it all over you, but it's a good product for ballast weight. So the easy way to check is pop off that cover. And so that right there is rim guard, okay? So that's the product that we're talking about. You don't wanna squirt a whole bunch of it out if you can help it. So it's a very good product, it smells though. It smells like soy sauce actually too. So it looks like it smells like it. it's a little bit thicker uh, consistency though, but a very good form of ballast weight inside your tires there. Um, oftentimes you're gonna have clear liquid though. So TL90 is what we use from our local tire shop, which is gonna be a, I think a sorghum byproduct if I remember right, but it's clear or maybe has a very light pinkish color to it, but not substantial like what you see here. Tractors that come from the south will oftentimes use water inside their tires. You might hear washer fluid being used. So there's other products you can use as well. But if you bought a tractor from the south and maybe you have it up north and you're not sure what it is, it doesn't have an odor of any kind or um, any coloration to it at all, you can always take a small sample out put it in a cup, put it in your freezer, let it sit there overnight, see if it freezes or not. If it does, it's probably water. If it doesn't freeze, you're probably gonna be good to go. All right, now it's time to get our Versa bracket. Mounted on the back of this tractor and a little fun fact for you guys, maybe unfamiliar, but the top pin is gonna be three quarters of an inch. Your two lower links are seven eighths, okay? So that's gonna be standard on a category one three point hitch. I'm gonna go ahead and lower down the three point hitch. There we go. When they don't have weight on them, they're not gonna always lower on their own or at least they're gonna lower very slowly, I should say. Pull that back up, that's about good. One of the cool things I like about the Kubotas in this series is they have these uh, nice sway arms on there. Set that there so you can pull this pin out, one on each side. Just like that. And look, super easy. It's not the turnbuckle style like on the 1025R, uh, even the John Deere 2 series. Uh, much nicer. Now I did see these sway bars available. I think somebody's making them custom uh, for the Kubota BX series. Now, I don't know where I found them, so if you guys know where to find those adjustable sway arms just like this for the BX, uh, post something down in the comments section to help the other folks out. All right. Show that one through there. There. Boom. Now, these Versa brackets are quick hitch compatible, but just showing you how this can go on connected directly to three-point hitch and then after that so you can see we don't have those sway bars locked in place so you can still shift it around a lot so you want to get everything centered right up and lock it back into place there we 
All right, so this is a pretty good setup for this size of a tractor. You know, one form of ballast weight is typically not gonna be sufficient. I always encourage you to check out your manual, but you have somewhere in the four or 500 pound ballpark, I think, of liquid ballast inside the tires. Another 600 pound, well, a little over 600 pounds between the eight 70 pound weights here and the Versa bracket. You add on a Spico Quick Hitch, that's another 70 pounds. You can get set up pretty well. We're gonna be comfortable today. All right, so this is JU Fab Works new bucket bracket for the Kubota tractors. There's some caveats though, so you gotta pay attention because I know that this won't work with the Kubota BX series. They have a different back plate design on there. A lot of the different series have different backing plates, but this will of course work with uh, this style bucket on the Kubota B series, uh, the Kubota LX series, some of the L series as well. I think maybe the MX. Jeff lists everything it'll work with on his website. So it's a really cool bracket though, made in America, which is uh, a really good thing to see. That's both US steel and fabrication as well, all right? So you're supporting a local company here in Southwest Michigan at the same time. Jeff was able to recently quit his job actually and uh, give this a go full time so pretty awesome to see. Now I throw this hitch in there just to show that it will work it's a very good compatibility this hitch itself is a three-way uh, hitch that comes from heavyhitch.com save five percent with code GWT at heavy hitch save five percent with code GWT at JU Fabworks for these bucket brackets we did a video last year all about the bucket brackets that he came out with for John Deere which for those John Deere standard duty buckets, they bend pretty easy, so they both fix a problem and give you versatility. Fortunately, the Kubota buckets are built pretty stout, so you are getting the additional versatility up top. So one of the reasons Jeff bought this tractor was with design in mind, because he wants to make different products. So he is investing in his company, and this is just one example of that. Now Jeff recently bought another bucket or two as well from Kubota, so he can get things set up on the BX and other models that they have. There's just, again, a lot of different configurations out there, different angles, different you know, welded on top plates or not, single piece top plates. There's all sorts of different variables, so you just wanna make sure you're getting the right thing but Jeff's more than happy to help and a lot more information on his website too. And now of course a good idea if you are going to use this receiver on your bucket is to get something like a drop hitch as well. Lower that down so when your trailer height is way down here it's just easier to attach to but nonetheless this is just to show the concept that it works very well. So again, I rock this forward to point it out and make sure you don't forget, you gotta pay attention to your bucket construction. Again, because every Kubota bucket is a little bit different, so you just wanna make sure it works for you. We showed how you install these on a John Deere bucket, but it's same concept, DIY. You just have six holes to drill out and bolt it on and connect here. Very solid, very secure. Something you can knock out in an hour or so. And again, use code GWT to save 5% off your order. One more for you too that Jeff dropped off. This is gonna be the bucket bracket for the 5E tractors. Again, he's gonna put the model numbers in there of what it will work with. A little bit different design compared to the smaller one. This is for your standard John Deere buckets. Uh, a little bit different angle, a little bit different bend, more of a 90 degree it looks like for this bigger unit, bigger D-rings, bigger hooks. It's just a beefier unit all around for the 5 Series tractors, but again, get the info you need at JU Fabworks. <laughs> So I don't know about you guys, but if you have these big leftover snow piles that start to melt down, you know, here it's along the road where there's salt and there's sand and there's little bits of rock and stone and other random pieces of trash. And they all tend to pile up and get collected in just a few spots, right? And then once that spring melt comes, 
you have all sorts of crap that you're left trying to clean up and rake out of your lawn. For me, it drives me nuts. One of the chores that I hate doing. It looks just gross too until you can get to it. So we had a really good warm up recently for the last couple of days, melted off a ton of our snow but it was raining so hard yesterday, I didn't want to do any video and figure I might tear up my lawn even worse doing that. So we're gonna see if it's soft enough today to try to scoop up this leftover debris that's kind of condensed down into a smaller pile. Just take it out back, chuck it in the woods and let that stuff melt off there. So if this works like I hope it does, then this could end up saving me hours of work in the spring and every spring to come. Hey, give me some kind of a sign if it looks like I'm gonna dig into the ground because there's no bucket level indicator. Is it pretty level right now, it looks like? Bottom edge, level? Or it... Okay. Okay, so yeah, uh, exercise caution. You wanna be pretty careful. I got a little too aggressive, all right? Thought I was a little bit too precise, but not quite enough. I was off by about an inch or so on there. Fortunately, I was able to dump this out. Oh, looks like it's gonna be a pretty clean repair. And I bet by the time spring rolls around, we won't notice anything different. Although, you guys will be some of the first to know. I gotta say though, it's my first side repair in the middle of winter. Not too bad. You know, I could have been not quite as aggressive and been okay, still got 80, 90% of it just stayed an inch or two above the ground level there, but you have random pieces of trash that just, just show up. And so at least you can collect that, get it out of the main yard and back to a corner where you can let it melt down, just scoop it up and throw it away at that point. So for me, it's something that you can do in the winter time, make life easier once the spring chores come around, check one more thing off your list. guys that is going to do it for us today i hope you found this enjoyable and informative if you did we'd love to have you subscribe and tag along hit that subscribe button down below if you are looking for something for your tractor we can help you out visit goodworkstractors.com we sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country i want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon